I've spoken about pricing, I've spoken about your attitude. Now let's look at the business tools. When you look at business, everyone focuses on making a profit and marketing. Fair enough. How do you market and how do you make a profit? You make a profit when your income is more than what you spend. Then you make a profit because you have money left. You have a profit. How do you get to that point where you don't have to go from month to month hustling, counting cents here, few hundred rand there, a thousand rand there, and after a year, nothing to show? When it comes to marketing, what I find is that it gets complicated, you get overwhelmed, and then you just abandon it and leave it. The big benefit of marketing that if you use the right platforms, and there are many free platforms, if you use the right platform and you are consistent, then they will pick it up. But this is what happens. And remember now, I'm, start, I'm talking with start to start up, owners of startup businesses, and also owners who don't, they can't figure out where they are going wrong. Let's start with, with marketing. So now, you found this brilliant marketing company who make the most beautiful promises and they say everything that you want to hear. And you pay them money that you don't really can, can, can afford and you hope now you're sitting, you've paid your marketing agency, you sit back, you relax because they all do all the work, right? Wrong. Your marketing agency is being paid to promote you on whatever platform. But you as the owner of the business, your employees in the business are your best marketing tools. I will say that again. You as the owner of the business and your employees are the best marketing tools. Why do I say that? If you treat your employees well, they will tell their family members about this great boss, that they must come and shop there, they must ask you for their services. That is what happens. You didn't pay a cent for that marketing. You yourself, wherever you go, you are the marketer of your business. No one knows the business better than you. No one knows the processes and the systems better than you. So wherever you go, you tell people about you, Mark, your company. Because it doesn't matter where you go, the question will come, so what do you do? You can say with pride, listen, I own a business and this is what I do. And this is why I love it. Just don't bore people where you want to talk like for the whole two hours about the business and the products and the services. No, you just tell them. And you say, no, I saw there was a need or this made me excited. That's why I started with the business. And be energetic. Draw people in so that they want to know more about your business. That's number one about marketing. Because I find business owners, people get treated like rubbish by their bosses. And then when you go into a place like that, you get awful service and they have an excellent service i mean they sell an excellent product and the service that you want it ticks all the boxes the one that they offer but you don't use them not because of the cost but because of the attitude when you walk into the place that is one of the key marketing tools what is the vibe like when someone enters your premises when someone interacts with one of your employees, when they interact with you, what vibe do you give? Because we don't deal with service and products, we deal with people. Another thing about marketing that we also forget, when I come across a, a, any good service, especially if it's a small business owner, when I have received good service, I review them. Because I want others to know about it. I tell as many people as I can about them. Right? And number two, what you need to remember is at that specific stage, 
I might not know anyone who would want to use your service. But two months down the line, a friend of mine says, listen, I'm looking for someone who does IT, so offers IT services. Who do you think I'm going to remember? You, because you gave me good service. Did you pay me for that? No, you just treated me well when I interacted with you. Another misconception about marketing. For each business, you need a different marketing strategy. You can be in the same industry, but you operate differently. And your marketing strategy will focus on what is unique to you. And it's not, and then also what you have to remember. There's no, I cannot promise you that you will get 50 people in the first month. I can't promise you that. I can only say to you, I will get you on as many platforms as possible. Because you don't know how many people are going to be interested in your service on that day. You don't know what is going to work for your company to reach those clients. So with marketing strategies, you it's trial and error. You test this work, this doesn't work. And it's only after three to six months that you will see results. So if you have shallow pockets, if you don't have money to pay a marketing agency, and you come and you say it's 2,000 rand a month and you expect that within a week or two weeks, customers will start flooding through your door. You are living in a dream world because that's not how marketing works. When you look at your major companies, do you realize the huge marketing strategy, the you, I mean, sorry, the huge marketing budget they have behind them to be visible on all platforms, to be in your face so that you can see them everywhere. You're not competing with a big business. You're not competing with a multinational corporation. You are doing you. And your marketing strategy must fit your business and your company. And that is what you must aim for. Not to get more than them or I want to sell more than them. No, you need to find out what is the message that I want to send to my customers? What is the products or the services that I want to showcase? And that is in a nutshell about marketing. And when I said earlier, marketing can seem very complicated and it can overwhelm you if you want to do everything at once. You know, they're on the platforms now. What is so wonderful is that you automate. So you can say on Facebook, if you want to be on Facebook, you can say, right, I want to put one post every day, but I don't have the time to do that. So then what you do once a week, you sit down, you write your five posts, and you tell Facebook when you want them to post those posts that you've written. One day of work, job is done. So marketing requires planning. And it's not when you put out on Facebook. Again, it comes back to consistency. Because with Facebook, it's likes and followers. But how many of that can you translate into cash? When it comes, what is the space or the platform that would work for your company. And what can you do consistently, time after time after time? Because remember, when you are starting your business and you don't have money to pay anyone, there's no way in hell that you will be able to do Facebook every single day. There's not, but you can make it look that, that way when you plan properly. Look at Instagram. Everybody's like, oh, you must have an Instagram presence. What does that help you? If you only post once every three months, no one is going to notice you. You are competing with people who are posting every single day. If you can't keep that up, then don't do it. But be realistic when it comes to your marketing and have the right expectations 
And when you can afford to pay someone, ask the right questions. Like I said, no one can promise you that you will be number one in Google. Google has a different algorithm. They apply certain algorithms. That's why I want to try to ask you, when you search for something, put in different keywords, like say for instance, how to get rich and see what comes up. Then again, put it on your laptop and then put it on your phone and see the different search results. So there are no guarantees when it comes to marketing. It's only when you start and apply and see how things work for your business, that is when you can say with confidence that this is what's working. But having said that, Facebook is more interactive. Facebook is where people can make, they can comment, they can like, they can follow you. So it's to get that connection and that visibility. That is what you use Facebook for. It's very seldom that you're going to get clients from Facebook unless it's someone who really knows you. So what happens is I see you on Facebook and I'm like, I like what you say. And then you go and Google them. That is how it works. So Facebook is not for sales unless you are selling clothes and shoes or beauty products, then it works beautifully. But if you offer a service, then Facebook might be a difficult um, nut to crack. So you need to decide what do you want to do on Facebook? What do you want to do on Instagram? What do you want to do on LinkedIn? This YouTube, you've got all these channels, but they require consistency. So don't fall for promises when you come to me for marketing and I say to you, no, 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 I will get, I can bet you by the end of this month, you will have 50 new clients. I'm not a lead generator. I am a marketer. I'm here to make you visible to bring you to the people who might be interested in your services or your contract or your your product it doesn't mean that they will buy from you that is your job you must make sure that your website is in order if you have a website you must make sure that it's up to date your services are there your products are there if it takes you to your facebook page make sure your facebook page it's up to date it has the latest information so those are just some of the marketing tips. So now, let's say your marketing works and clients come in. What systems do you have in your company? And that's where bookkeeping comes in. Before we get to the bookkeeping, let's start with the admin. If I call you now and I say, listen, I'm interested in what you sell. Do you ask my name? Do you ask my surname? Do you ask my number? Do you know, do you ask, where did you get my details? Those are all the questions that you need to ask. And look, I won't be comfortable to give my number to someone. But now with cell phones, hello, your number is there. People can see it. But already you don't have to ask the number. You can just ask the name, the surname, what product are you interested in? And that is how you begin to keep record of potential clients. It doesn't mean now because I called you looking for your service that now you have to bombard me with emails, with SMSs or with WhatsApp messages. Don't do that. It's irritating and it puts people off. So you need to find a balance on how to still stay in contact with your clients without pissing them off. Right. So what I wanted to ask you with that, do you have a contact? Do you have a list? with the details of your clients, right? How do you keep track of the tasks that you do in your business? How do you plan your week? What tools do you use with your email address? How do you streamline and simplify things so that you don't have to use too many devices or go to too many different accounts just to send one message? Those are the systems that you need to have in place because you focus so much on the client that must come in that you don't prepare what's going to happen when they arrive at your door. How is the attitude of your workers? How do people feel when they walk into your shop? When you answer the phone, how do you answer your calls? These are little things that makes a difference. WhatsApp, 
it's a brilliant place to sell products on. But this is what I found that put me off. It's when I send a message to you now on WhatsApp. Most people are reasonable. You get the nutcases who, who want to respond immediately. That's a sign that you don't want to do business with them. If the nutcase is a nutcase before you even have done business, don't do business, no matter how much they pay you. So now, most of us are reasonable. We understand that you won't be able to answer immediately. But now this is what happens. I ask you, this is the product I see you are selling. What is your response? Send me a private message. Please don't do that. Please. Or you don't even respond at all. Or you tell me for more information, you must join a WhatsApp group. Do you know how many potential customers you are losing by doing that nonsense? You know what it tells me is that you don't know your products. Because I can understand if you say to me, look, first of all, you answer your phone or you respond in a WhatsApp message. You say, you ask, what is the services? What services are you interested in? At least it shows me a response. Don't tell me I must do additional steps. If I, and I just want to know how much is the product. Give people a price when you are selling a product. Please, as a belief to South Africans, man. Do that. You know, you, 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 we live in a country where people sell amazing products. And I go onto these groups or I see something on Facebook. And the person is so captivating and so persuasive. And I say, I want to know more about this product. And they say, DM me for, pro DM me for more information. As a belief dog, man. Stop with that. You are losing clients. You're not getting clients. Why would I want to DM you for product and all you have to say in a message is this is my price range between 2,000 and 5,000, between 100 and 500 rand, depending on what you need. Why is that so hard to do? You know, others you need to send your email address. I know you are being told that's how you gather information. But if you make that a requirement just so someone can get a price, I will go on elsewhere. And not just me, lots of people I speak to have the same complaint. You are throwing money away by putting in nonsense steps. And then another thing, it comes back to competition. Someone once told me when I asked him, do you put the pricing of what you are making? Do you put it on your website? And he's like, no, 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 I can't. My competitor will see. Really? Really? You would rather lose clients because you are afraid your competitor will see how much you charge? If you charge more or less than them, what is that to you? You know what you are offering. People will come to you not because you are the cheapest. They will come to you because you offer them what they are asking at a price that they can afford. It comes again. That's all. Can you see how pricing and marketing and your attitude, how it all fits in together? There's no standalone in business.